Hello everyone, uh, welcome. So we have a quite special webinar today. Uh, it's one that I haven't done for ages. It's actually, uh, it's based on, it's exclusively based on uh, Jack Swanger um, a book, a very, 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 very bo good book. Um, excellent for not only beginners i mean it's 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 an excellent book for uh, advanced traders intermediate traders as well just to you know just sometimes you don't know you, you don't it's 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 very helpful to see the others uh, perspective as well so i'm referring of course to the uh, getting um uh, to uh, getting started in technical analysis this is the name of the book and today we're gonna just cover one, just just a single chapter from that book, which is based on mid trend entry and paramiting. Okay, uh, so it's it's uh, it's a, a trading strategy, it's a, a different approach. Uh, but before we start, I would like to make sure that you uh, hear me loud and clear as usual, and I will go through the, the disclaimer warning until I have a quick feedback from you guys in the handout section. I have uploaded just now, my bad, sorry. I have just uploaded the uh, uh, the PDF version of the slides. It's the slides by the PDF version as usual. Uh, you know that uh, this, this, um, these webinars are recorded, so you you will get a URL a link in your, e in your emails uh, after we are done. But also, we are posting this in our in our YouTube channel, HFM YouTube channel. You know that Hot Forex has been uh, evolved into HFM. Nothing changes, as I keep saying. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes. Just the name of it. Just the name, in order to be able uh, not solely offer you assets uh, that are based on um, that they are spot contracts or uh, CFDs etc but also to offer you um, other assets a, a wider gamma of wider variety of assets such as physical stocks which we will announce soonish if I'm not mistaken is this week but I'm not sure so Disclaimer, this material provides general marketing communication for information purposes only and does not constitute an independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information containing an indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Use this knowledge that any <clears throat> investment in leveraged products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the users are solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. A risk warning, trading leveraged products such as Forex and derivatives may not be suitable for investors as they, ha they um, carry a high degree of risk to your capital. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks involved, taking into account your investment objectives and level of experience before trading. And if necessary, seek independent advice. Please read the full risk disclosure. So, admin is out of the way but i still don't have a feedback from you guys in regards to the audio hello michael can you hear me dear and see my screen as well just a quick confirmation So, thank you, thank you all for the feedback. So we are good to go then. Remember, as usual, you can find us at webinars at hfm.com, <coughs> the email address. 
the age of uh, the hot forex one still works but at some point uh, we will shift it to hfm so webinars at hfm.com and this is me i will just skip myself anyway i think from the names that i can see in uh, our attendees list today um, uh, I can see very familiar uh, familiar uh, names, so I guess you know who I am. So I'm gonna skip myself and go straight to the uh, to the book and to the mid trend entry and paramiting. So let's start. <clears throat> Sorry, just so as I was saying, let's start. So, first of all, let's clarify. Let's here we are uh, a little bit on what is all this about what, what, what is this mid trend and paramiting where is it based for etc okay I will, I will do a quick a quick intro where are your questions by the way i've lost your questions we can hear you and see your screen perfect perfect oh there is great and okay let's start so um you know that uh, i will not say that uh it's all about sentiment but the very 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 big role in trending is the sentiment right because it's all about human trading it's human minds it has to do with um, with the sentiment of the investors with the with, with what they are thinking and how they react according to their fear their um, greatness and etc right so for many reasons okay a trader may find himself considering whether to enter a new position um, after maybe he has saw some kind of a sharp move or something. And if we see some uh, sharp moves, we are thinking, is it time to get in? Has it run out of steam already? Um, so we, we are like, we are getting into this mentality of uh, trying to figure out what what to do right so th this is this is the case i mean this is uh, this is i think you know what i'm talking about so um so we are witnessing some kind of of behaviors no th thoughts uh, that put some barriers in front of us so what i mean uh we are thinking that okay is it too late to enter is, uh, has it run out of steam or shall I wait a bit longer in order to get a better price um, or shall I wait for a correction just to uh, just to uh, buy at a very very low price we do all this because these thoughts um, in regards to when it's better to enter in regards to how sustainable the trend is um, and we, we we are all actually facing facing this kind of situation confusion confusion in our heads so this is something that the majority of traders okay um uh, faced and many traders uh the most of the time uh, could be extremely reluctant to trade the market so this attitude can be easily explained in psychological terms right the act of entering a new position after a trend is already well underway in a sense represents a self-admission of failure so even if the trade is profitable the trader knows that its gains his gains would have been much greater if she had acted earlier right we have greatness in our blood, unfortunately. So we always, even if we are in profit, we're thinking, oh, what if I, 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 I uh, had my position open earlier? What if this is, this is what if is, is, is just a, 
uh, it's a big obstacle in our lives in, in general, not in only in trading, obviously. So, so when a trader has a strong sense of probable market direction, uh, they tend to think that ah, I've missed so much of the move. Why bother? Okay, uh, I think what you agree so far with me. So, and I will give you an example. I will take the same example as um, actually I'm following the book, guys. Okay, I'm I'm presenting exactly the thoughts of Mr. Jack Swanger. Uh, oh, why did I left this on? Sorry. I have instead I've seen a mistake over here. It was from my previous webinar, which was about pivot points, and I didn't delete it. So okay. Okay. So as I was saying, okay. So I'm following the exact examples. That's why my pictures are not good so good because are from the book. But I I wanted to precisely follow the book. Uh, because it's his own, it's his own um, work, it's his own strategy. So I wanted to follow it step by step. And because it's a book that is quite expensive, and you cannot really find it for free, or I wasn't able to find it for free or something, or in an online version or something. So that's why I decided to follow exactly the book and I give you uh, this uh, and present you this chapter about uh, mid trend and trim parameters. So. As an example from the book, um, we have over here a coffee uh, chart. Okay, it's a coffee uh, market. Very, very old. It doesn't matter. I just want you to focus on the on the uh, on, on 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 the on the pattern and etc. So this figure, as you can see, is a coffee market in the mid May uh, of 1994. Not that it matters. As you can see, it's only no indicators. It's just a chart oriented chart, just price, poor price action trading. So as you can see, on the, by examining this uh, this coffee chart, uh, <clears throat> we could see that it was moving sideways, and then we had a sharp. Uh, sharp price advance over here at the um, at the uh, end of April and up to the mid of May. So consider that we have our trader back in 1994 examining the coffee. Uh, after he he missed or she or whatever to participate in this jump, okay, in this jump over here. I just realized that I was pointing. Let me use my pointer, laser pointer. So uh, let's assume that uh, back in 1994, okay, I was four years old back then. So I will guess I will just name it, uh, I don't know, it was Daniel uh, back in 1994. And uh, he was examining this um, chart after though, after the sharp uh, rally. So he would note that the market had pen penetrated the upside of a prior year long trading range with prices remaining in new high ground for two weeks. So can you see that after, on the, this sharp, okay, in this sharp, the asset remain on these highs for two weeks. Also, another note that our trader back then did is that the prices had just formed a flagged pattern. So we had an extensive trading range for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. A sharp rally for what one, two weeks. And by connecting the highs and the lows, we can see something looking like a flag pattern. Uh, the title of the book, okay, I will, uh, so getting, I will type you the title of the book, getting started um, in technical analysis by 
Shuck. Swanger. Here it is. He, he wrote many, 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 many books. He's an excellent uh, technical analyst, economist, author. So, so we have we have this um, not, not, um, notes, uh, this prologue trade range, this spike into new highs for two weeks, this flag pattern after the sharp move. And you know, do you know what flag patterns means? The flag pattern, this this which looks like a flag, is is a price price action indicative of another imminent uh, upswing. Okay, so this is we could say a bullish formation, a potential bullish that they will continue moving upwards or something. If if of course we have a confirmation, but yes, um, this flag pattern after such a sharp move implies indicates of another imminent upswing. However, observing that prices have already advanced over 35% since April, um, our trader and maybe us, if, he, if we, we had been in his legs, um, he might be reluctant to enter a new long position. And the reason is that we could say that, oh, it's over, overbought, it's overextended, it might correct, it might pull back. So, you know, it's not always that obvious. Even though we have seen the flag over here, um, okay, the, the majority, not the majority, but the many, many traders will, will, uh, um, will be on fear to enter long, even though this flag formation has, has been posted and is a bullish formation. So regardless of that, because that was a very sharp move, um, <clears throat> many traders could remain reluctant to enter a new long position because they are, they are, um, they, are um, uh, they uh, worry that this is an overextended market already. So I will move on. This is just to give you the idea of how think people are, are actually, what are they? Uh, oops, sorry. So, yeah, we have seen that. So, but, but, I put, but, just, just uh, two weeks after, not even two weeks after, the asset, as you can see, okay, this this is the the, the follow up. This uh, uh, chart is the follow up, so it shows us May, June, July. That flag that we observed at the mid of May, it was actually uh, it confirmed. It confirmed. So. It, Regardless of the fact that the traders usually are reluctant after such observations, such uh, uh, sharp moves, and etc., the technical side of the of the uh, market was correct. So the flag, uh, the flag pattern, which um, it's a bullish formation, indeed confirmed a few days afterwards with a with the price gumping up, if I zoom in, I'm not sure whether I can, with, if you see, it gapped up above the flag and keep extending and extending. So the flag confirmed as a bullish pattern. What I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to say that with, uh, with this second chart, this second chart illustrates the folly of this conclusion, the folly of the conclusion that the market was overextended. Incredibly, as of mid-May 1994, the coffee prices had only completed about one-fifth of their ultimate advance. And look where it ended. Look where it ended. So it was at, come on, it was the flag, it was at $115, around $115. But it ended up 
three times more. Three times more. No, five times more. What I'm talking about, five times more. The flag was 115. And if I'm not mistaken, at the end, it reached... Uh, no, three times more. Yes, I was right. It reached 260. More than double the price. More than double. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, the, so I'm trying to make you understand, and Jack, what I was trying to make you understand is that, I mean, firstly, it's trying to uh, make it clear how important it is to live fear behind and stick on what you see, not what you think. What you see, not what you think. It's, and like Edwin and Edwin Levens mentioned, prices are never too high to begin buying, to too low to begin selling. Prices are never too high to begin buying, to too low to begin selling. So, as we can see in the next two months, okay, the next two more than two months. So since the mid of May up to the mid of July, the remaining four fifths of a price rise was achieved in two months. Okay, so the key question is now how one enters the market in the midst of a major trend. So actually the goals in implementing what we are seeing today, the mid-trend entry. So the goal, so let's say, okay, okay, we have we have seen this flag, we weren't sure, we thought that it may overexpend it, expected so extended, so we uh, we will remain reluctant, okay, but we had two months of advance. So the key question, even even if you are afraid to enter on this bullish formation over here. The key question is, can I still enter later on in the mid of a trend? And how can I enter the market in the mid of a major trend? And this is what uh, Mr. Jack is trying to present in this chapter. So actually, the goals in implementing a mid trend um, a, a mid-trend position are the same as those of initiating any position. So, favorable timing of entry, right, and risk control. These are the two things, two initiatives for any position. And all of us, what we want, nice risk management and a nice time to enter the market or the best possible time to enter the market. And a favorable one. So that's why in order to achieve, to be able to implement a mid-trend entry, a mid-trend position, uh, Mr. Jack um, introduced three, uh, three four, 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 sorry, four key strategies that could be employed to achieve these objectives, to achieve, to, to achieve favorable timing of entry and risk control. And here we are. Let's see the very first one. Percent retracement. This is how it's called, the very first strategy. Oops. So this approach, guys, attempts to capitalize on the natural tendency of a market to partially retrace prior price swings. Okay, so generally speaking, one might initiate the position any time the market retrace a given percentage of the price swing from the last relative low or high. Don't worry, I will explain exactly what I'm, I'm referring. You will understand from the example of the book, okay? So just have in mind that this, this kind of strategy, what it targets, it targets um, 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 uh, that even if you missed, I mean, to enter at the beginning of a trend or something, you can still initiate, enter a position any time that the, the, the price retrace, but not to retrace like just randomly retrace, no, 
It needs to be at a precise percentage. In main, in, uh, uh, according to this strategy, the pullback, the retracement, will be a figure around 35 to 65 percent the max. If it goes uh, uh, above 65 percent, then you shouldn't enter the market. And we'll explain. We will consider um, the um, uh, and the example together, or a coffee example again. So, 35 to 65 percent retracement. That's a reasonable um, a choice according to Mr. Jack. So, a price in the proximity of the relative low or relative high could be used as a stop point on the position. Okay. So, let's see together. Let's see together just to understand what we are talking about. So here is a bigger picture of coffee. It's still coffee. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, do I have the correct one on? Yes, 8.3. Just give me a second. I'm a bit confused right now. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So, as you can see over here, uh, yep, <clears throat> as you can see, so the market, it was in a rally. It wasn't, it's not coffee, by the way, my, my bad. <laughs> uh, so, the market was appreciating, right? Topping over here, but there was a pullback in May 19th, nine, 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 May 19, sorry, um, uh, in the mid of May, in the mid of, of uh, nine, 1993. So, can you see this pullback? So, this decline. So, if we measure the decline, is a fall of around 65%, and it stopped at 65, it didn't move further to lower. So, that's a decline around 65%. So it stopped over here and it was consolidating. So the fact that it found the floor and it didn't post more than 65% losses, that was a buying signal because you can see it kept that floor for many weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine weeks, more than nine weeks. So that was a buying signal. The fact that it found the floor, it didn't exit, uh, uh, it didn't uh, uh, decline more than 60%. It found the floor for many, many, many weeks and it was consolidated and even actually um, uh, started improving. It was a buying signal. Okay, so, um, so th this is just uh, one example. Afterwards, Okay, we can see another example over here in which it, it, it appreciated again, broke the previous high, posted a new high over here and declined. On this retracement, we had a 50% retracement. So the 50% retracement over here could be used as a, an entry point. So over here we have uh, uh, in this figure, we have illust it shows this picture shows the entry points using this approach. So, assuming a 50% retracement as a criterion, okay, as the main criterion, and then figure out making sure that it, uh, it has the decline has stopped and it starts appreciating again. So, that's another buying signal. The, the main, just to highlight something, okay. Every strategy has its odds and its uh, cons, its advantages and disadvantages. So the key thing about percentage retracement strategy uh, is that um, the main advantage of this uh, method is that it is capable of providing superior entry points. However, it is also subject to major disadvantage. What I mean by that, the major disadvantage is that frequently the necessary retracement conditions may not be fulfilled until the trend has carried much further or possibly even reverse. So, so what's the key? The key is that it's a bit risky to enter the market as soon as you see 
that it pulled back from 35% to the maximum 65%. You need to wait for confirmation. I mean, you see over here, I had to wait. We had to wait to see whether this floor will be sustained. It jumped higher and then turned down again in support this floor, I can support the body this floor and then uh, started approve, uh, appreciate. So we had to, we had to wait for confirmation. So um, we will never be able to enter the market at the low, at the level of the low, because we need to wait for confirmation. So the buying signal will have been somewhere here after we confirm that that has kept us a support level and it will decline further. The same stands for here. It dipped down to here, but we weren't sure whether it will continue downwards or not, whether this 50% will be sustained. We had to wait a few more weeks to see whether it will, the, 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 whether the positive momentum will increase and it will start sloping higher, not tend to enter long. So this is the key disadvantage with this percentage that um, uh, in order to be sure, you need to wait for the trend to be carried much further before you entered. Um, I'm gonna see Koji. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see your question afterwards. Sorry, I uh, I need to go through. Um, and just similar to deciding whether to enter, what is yourself to do that you're already entering and you often give up a trade and when I went back later to assess it, this is I should have left it beyond the temporary push. Okay, yes, yes, please do so. Even though I'm not sure whether you have uh, seen some of Stuart's webinars in regards to emotions, in psychology. Um, if not, if not, it will be good for you to participate one to those ones as well. Uh, let me see whether I can find it for you. So actually, Koji is asking, is, is saying that he 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 has experienced um, these kinds of feelings. I mean, uh, not to be sure whether you should enter or not, uh, decide not to, and then get him back to the to see the chart. And he, you, you and um, eventually it went on the uh, on the direction that you were thinking. So. I mean, this fear, this concern, this uncertainty that we are facing. Um, but let me just. Um, uh, yeah. There was one called how to improve your trading mindset. And there are there are lots actually that Stuart did, very good ones. Um, about mindset, about uh, emotional control, the mind game of trading. Okay, I'm gonna just, because I need to, keep going but send this send it to us privately as well Koshi. in the meantime i'm gonna send you once again to the past past webinars link in which you can find all our our webinars and if you check about if you search on that website with the words emotion or mindset or um 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 oh, sorry or uh, uh, mindset, mind games, emotions, uh, you will find all the relevant um, uh, webinars as well. But yeah, feel free to contact us at webinars at hotforex, at, oh, 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 I got webinars at igfm.com. So let's move on. Okay, so this is, this is straightforward. I mean, th this is the very first strategy is percentage, percentage per, per, uh, per, sorry um it's uh, it's called percent retracement and it clearly states that every in a in a trend in a 
uh, in a trend, a pullback, if it's no more, a correction, um, no more of 65%, so between 35% to 65%, it could be considered as an entry point, only if you confirm that a support has been found and it will not longer uh, retrace further. So that's a bullish example, but obviously the same thing stands for a uh, for a downtrend with corrections uh, higher. Okay. So now let's move on to a second strategy, which is called reversal or minor reaction. So this approach this approach is based on waiting for a minor reaction to uh, to uh, materialize and then entering on the first sign of a resumption of the major trend. Okay, so of course the precise method will depend on how a reaction and trend resumption were defined. So the choices are virtually limitless. Guys, it's just to give you ideas, okay? This, by the way, I haven't, yes, you're right, uh, Agorete. There is no, these strategies, they don't have a particular time frame. They can be applied in every single time frame, okay? Which, from which highs and lows should we do the retracement from? From the, what do you mean? I mean, Obviously here, you see, there is only one high. I mean, latest, highest high and latest. I mean, this is it. This is the measurement here. Top, down, here. This is what I mean. Um, I go, okay, you got it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so as I was saying, the precise method will depend, this reversal of minor reaction method, um, will um, depend on how a reaction and trend resumption were defined. So as I said, the choices are virtually limitless. So let's provide one possible set of definitions. So what we mean by minor reaction. A minor, minor reaction, in an uptrend, for example, do I have an uptrend example over here? No? No, I have a downtrend only. Okay. So, a minor reaction in an uptrend could be defined as N days lows, a new low that is lower than the lowest low of the previous 10 days and so on and so forth. So the resumption now of the trend could be a close higher than the most recent X days high. So I will explain what I mean. Okay, because we have the example, I will explain it, but it will be for a downtrend example. Okay, so let's see the downtrend. Can you see over here? So what we mean by minor example, minor uh, reaction, sorry. So here we have a downtrend, okay, right? Lay, uh, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, low. So that defines a, a downtrend. But as you can see, <clears throat> we have over here, um, for example, a minor reaction in a downtrend could be defined as a, a consecutive uh, lows for eight, eight days. Okay, okay. so uh, a minor reaction in a downtrend could be defined as a new eight day, for example, high, which is a sell signal and will occur when price closes below the most recent four day low. So let, let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look actually, because otherwise you get confused. So this is the example, but maximize. Yeah, just, just to see <coughs> what we are talking about. Excuse me. <coughs> so here we have, here is a Motorola shares. That doesn't matter, 1998, it doesn't really matter, but 
um, um, yeah, but over here, our asset start dropping, right? So this figure, this Motorola share shows some sell signals in a downtrend using a 10 day relative high to define a reaction and the close below the three day low to define a resumption. So come again, let's measure together again, okay? So we, uh, we, we had a sharp dip, then the asset came up posting the latest high, relative high for the last 10 days. So one, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that was the latest, the highest level for the past 10 days. Okay, so we put a note over here. Okay, we put a note that this is the 10 day um, relative high. Okay, then it, it, it came down, okay, consolidating a bit, okay, but as you can see, uh, so we have over here some kind of a temporary support level because it came down and it stopped on this previous low and it, it was consolidating over here for a few days. Okay, so you see down here for one day, two days, slightly up, then turn down again on the same support level, again and again. So that was actually more than three days lows, but yeah, that was a support level. So a close below this support level, it will be our sell signal with stop loss at the relative high. Are you with me? Or have you been lost? So what this, what is this about? This approach, it doesn't have some specific numbers that you should consider. I mean, stick on the 10 day one or three day one. It's just a, it's the, just you need to realize the, 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 the perception. You need to realize that this approach simply says that if you see if you see a man, minor reaction of your overall trend and a resumption afterwards, then try to find the appropriate time to enter the market based on this minor reaction and this resumption. Okay, as soon as you see a reaction and then a trend resumption, like so a signal that the, the trend will continue on the, on the initial direction, then you can enter the market. This might be 10 day and three day low. It, it, it's, it's not fixed, but look at that. Okay, even if you miss that because it was the beginning of the trend. Our asset has been in a downtrend for, let's assume that these are months, okay? One month, two months, three months okay so we are, have been in a downtrend this rebound over here posting a, a relative high so a new high is we, we it makes us think hmm is this a reversal of the overall trend or is it a minor reaction let's put a note so we are adding our trend line on on this latest high this is not a 10 year one this is maybe if i measure correctly so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fifteen fourteen fifteen twenty one twenty i think twenty twenty days highs this is a twenty days highs so I put a note over here and I'm waiting to see whether this was just a minor reaction, just a rebound, a small correction of this downtrend or not. So I've put a note, okay, at uh, this relative high and I'm waiting to see, will it continue bouncing higher or will the trend, the downtrend continue? Will I have a trend resumption? And indeed it came down, okay, Okay, came down over here. Come in, let me zoom in. You see, it came down, having something like a rounding bottom. Okay, and I could see 
that, okay, if you, it is not a necessary thing that you will add uh, your support line over here. For me, that was a better support line because we had retested once, twice, three times. So that was a better support level. You can figure out your, which is your, um, your um, um, re, uh, lowest low as a support. And we can see that it broke that support and it extended lower. And that was a selling signal. Okay, that was a selling signal because it was, we have seen a minor reaction and a trend resumption. Another one over here, minor uh, reaction, trend a minor reaction, trend resumption here. Okay, do you do you get what I mean? Actually, yes, yes, accurate, yes. Okay, so let's move on to the third strategy. Continuation patterns and trading range backgrounds. So, uh, just to uh, make you understand something, Jack over here doesn't give precise strategies. It tried to give you another perspective. Okay, that's why there are no rules, particular rules. Okay, there are some rules like the very first one, which we had a 35 to 65% the maximum retracement, but nothing else on that. I mean, just some minor guidelines. So continuation pattern and trading range uh, breakouts. So the use in general of patterns is something that uh, we really support because um, it's another technical tool. So the use of continuation patterns, trading ranges, it's a, a very good tool for identifying entries, entry signals, as you already know. Um, uh, because anyway, in, in to some extent, sharp patterns are in the eye of the beholder. Is the this approach will reflect a degree of uh, um, uh, subjectivity? Okay. So we have another figure over here. This is Cotton, March 1995, and I will show it right now. But firstly, let's cover the steps that you need to follow uh, for applying uh, this kind of approach, this kind of uh, breakout of strategy. Sorry. So uh, firstly. You need to, if you have identified a pattern, a continuation pattern, what do we mean by continuation pattern? So if we are in an uptrend and we have identified a bullish pattern, that, in, that is a continuation pattern. In, it, it signals that the trend will continue in the same direction. If we need a downtrend, we'll identify another bearish pattern. So that implies that the um, trend will continue moving lower. So this is a continuation pattern. So if you have identified in an ex existing trend more, uh, some con continuation patterns, you need to make sure that at least five trading days are required to form a continuation patterns, pattern if you are in a daily chart, okay? Five trading days. Now, if you are intraday, make sure that this is at least five sessions. Okay, this is a more, um, it's not an intraday setup, but this is more or less a daily in a daily time frame. But I guess it can be more used as well in a four hour and one hour chart. But make sure that your continuation pattern is formed at least for five sessions, five hours, five, four hours, candles, etc. So the, the very first thing that you need to make sure as well as well is that there is a trend. Okay, that there is an established trend. Secondly, not absolutely necessary, but it is to wait for penetration of a continuation pattern for entry signal. Okay, penetration of the continuation pattern. As soon as you see that, you can enter. And also, continuation patterns are expected to be resolved by price swings in the same direction as the price moves that precedes their formation. So we'll Let's see the example and you will understand what I'm talking about. So this figure of cotton. So we can see that the asset has been into the upside 
for October, November, December, and etc. So, but I, I zoom in a bit to what we have over here. So we had an app, okay, it had been and done. We had an appreciation and, until the mid of October, right? Some slowdown over here, forming a flag, right? A flag, a triangle, not flag, sorry, a, a triangle. But it jumped up and gapped outside the triangle, and that was a bullish signal. And that's a buying signal because it's a triangle. It's a breakout above the triangle in an existing in an ex existing uptrend. You can tell me, but Andrea, uh, how the hell I will know that is an uptrend? And you're right, because we, it's, it just started, but it has been to the upside for two, one, two, three weeks in a row. So it's further extension on an existing three weeks uptrend, right? So it's considered as a, a um, but okay, that, that might, was too early. I can see that. My, this my, was too early. So we had up, further up, breaking the September's highs. So we were already officially in an uptrend. And after that, we have seen for a few days, actually two, nearly two weeks time, something looking like a flag, which indeed, the asset managed to broke above it and to close above it. It's, it's, it's quite, it's not easy to be seen, but it, it closed above this flag. And that was another buying signal because we have seen, in a, we, have, we have been already in an uptrend for one month and a half, right? Even if you missed that as well, that's fine. You can see further advance, now a new flag, and it gapped up above it. Can you see this gap up? That's another bind signal. But have in mind that if you see continuation patterns breaking in an existing trend, the bottom of these patterns could be used as stop loss. So as soon as the asset breaks the pattern, the continuation pattern, you can enter with stop loss the bottom of the pattern. This is what the continuation pattern strategy or trading range breakout by Jack Swagger is suggesting. That if you see continuation patterns for at least five trading days and then a breakout, so a, chorus, a breakout that will trigger the buying signal, in this case because it's a buying signal because we are in an uptrend, then you can enter long, okay, with um, um, <clears throat> with um, stop loss at the bottom, at the bottom of the pattern. So over here, this was our latest flag. The bottom of this flag was that level over here. On this flag, the bottom was here. On this flag, the bottom was the beginning of the of the triangle and was here. Okay, are you okay so far? So, so this is this is what the the third um, strategy is all about. So the same perspective that uh, you can see something similar, but for um um uh, for, but uh, from the for the for the for the downtrend, the same thing stands, but but for a, a downtrend is vice versa. Um, what else should I let you know about this one? I think that's pretty much it. Okay, let's move on to. So, by the way, a, a continuous patterns includes triangles, flags, pennants, rectangles, and etc. Okay, so that's a pennant, flag, pennant. So we had all of them in this cotton example. That's why I, I kept it. Now, the very last strategy from Jacques. And we are on time. It's called reaction to long-term um, to long-term uh, uh, moving average. Uh, uh, trying to digest time volumes and okay, okay, okay. Let's try to okay. So reaction to long-term moving average. 
So price retracements, but precisely, so in this um, yeah, strategy, we will use a moving average. Can you see this line? We're gonna use a moving average. You know, in the daily chart, we tend to have 20 day or 50 day or even 200 moving average. In the one hour chart, we still, we, we tend to use 20 exponential moving average and 10 exponential moving average or even 50 more sometimes. So in general, so, okay, uh, just to simplify a bit what, um, so, um, So, okay, this is this is a daily chart. Um, I'm trying. Okay, let me just show you something. So here's a just poor, 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 um, uh, poor price action. Okay. So let's see. Okay, and I put a 20-day moving average because it satisfies. Uh, just fine. You can see provides support since the mid of April to the Euro New Zealand. Uh, it was a resistance area on this sharp decline in February. Maybe if it was an exponential one, it was even better one. Let's see. Mm, no, to to it, it clutched too uh, too many times. Let's keep a simple one. Okay. So okay. So. Uh, a, a, a price retracement to moving average. So you see like this one, a pullback, a price retracement. So we have been in an uptrend in this Euro New Zealand since beginning of April. So a price retracement into the moving average, touching the moving average, can be viewed as signal that the reaction to the main trend is near an end. So over here, the fact that our asset turn again retesting the 20-day moving average, our moving average, raise questions to us, to our head. Hmm, is this uptrend ready to run out of steam? Is this uptrend nearly in an end? Who knows? So specifically, if a trader believed that, that an uptrend is in place, long position could be, en could be entered any time price declines to or below a specific moving average. And this is what happened over here as well. People, even though people were thought that, mm, is it this an alert that is running out of steam or something? But because they already knew that an uptrend was, was in place, these sometimes, these pullbacks to the moving average could trigger uh, could trigger long positions, could trigger uh, positions because uh, of this, this could be seen as a correction. And that's why we have seen Euro New Zealand, for example, in two days to the upside, because this pullback has been considered as a nice level to enter long again due to this prologue upward trend. So similarly, in a downtrend, if a downtrend was believed, okay, if people believe that we are in a downtrend, okay, short position could be initiated on rallies. So, for example, hmm, for example, hmm, let me see. Let me see if I can find an example, a downtrend example. Why not? Okay, you see, over here. Oh, I lost it. I did lost it. So we had been in a downtrend, a sharp downtrend for more than two months, but we have some kind of a rebound over here, okay? But this rebound didn't last for long and decline started again. Why? Because people are seeing this kind of correction, this kind of rallies, as a good opportunity to enter short again on the belief that this decline will continue, this downtrend will continue. There was some appreciation again, but as soon as it reached over here, it started decline again on the belief that this prologue downtrend will extend. I know this is a bit confusing, but I will clear this mess up right now. So this is what, just to make you understand how, how what, what people are thinking. So. Like in this example over here, right? Um, 
we have, okay, in this case, it was a 40 day uh, moving average just because we are in a, a, a daily chart, but a, a long one that lasted for more than a year. So it's a more than a year uptrend over here. So we could see that every single time that the asset was retesting this moving average, this 40 word, uh, days moving average, eventually it, it got another boost and extended even the lower and uh, higher and extending this upwards level. So every pullback, as long as it's not a sustainable one in order to break and extend below the moving average, it will be considered as a, um, a, a nice entry point with direction on the overall direction of the trend. So have in mind, so be, 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 be very careful. We are not suggesting over here that if the asset goes back to the moving average, we can enter long or short. I mean, if we are in an uptrend, like in this New Zealand over here, if we're in an uptrend, we're not suggesting that a return, a pullback to the move to the uh, moving average implies to a long position. Okay. We said according to the this strategy, a retest of the moving average could signal a long position if we are in an uptrend, if and only if the uptrend is in is in effect and also the uh, decline didn't broke below the moving average. So you see over here, it touched the moving average, but it closed above it. It didn't close below it. That's why this could trigger a long position, long entries. So you need to be careful. It doesn't mean that just by touching the moving average, uh, it, it will trigger long positions. It will, and you need to confirm that indeed it's not a breakout. It will not close below that. So you need to wait until the candles are closed. So, okay, obviously uh, this is a very old example, but just trying to I'm I'm trying to make you understand. You see, it was retested, retested, touch it, but close above it and extend above it. So that was when the confirmation came. The confirmation came as soon as it was above the moving average and close above the moving average. Over here again, it touched it one, two, three times, but didn't close below it. So another buying signal. Over here, over here, we had something weird. We it broke it, it drift below it, but it quickly turned above it. It didn't extend losses. So over here, if something like that happens, you need to wait. You need to wait to see whether it will post another latest low. If it doesn't, if it doesn't post, if it doesn't post further low, like at that, but instead it quickly turn up and post a high, like this one. You see, it drifted down, but it didn't continue dropping. It quickly turned up and started posting some higher highs and higher lows until it returned to the uh, moving average. So over here, if something like that happens, you need to wait. You need to wait until you confirm that the asset is above and is posting not only above moving average, but also extending higher. Because you see, we had a pullback again afterwards. So you need to avoid this and wait for confirmation. So the confirmation came here, where we had extension above. So the confirmation, the entry, a nice entry for me would be here, this one, because it broke the highest high and is above moving average. So that's a nice entry point. Okay, obviously there, there was a correction over here, but it doesn't matter because it continue on my favor. Okay, so uh, just to clarify a bit the very last one, reaction to long-term moving average could trigger entry uh, position as long as you confirm that the asset doesn't um, uh, hasn't break out and 
close and continue extending below the moving average in a case of a long position. In a case of a downtrend, if the downtrend is in effect and the, the short position could be taken on rallies on the moving average or slightly above the moving average as long as you quickly see a return back on the direction of the trend. Okay. Okay, that's not a clear and a very nice example, but it's the one that Mr. Jack is presenting. So it is what it is. Now, uh, are you key with me? Yes. So parameting. <clears throat> so um, you can say you haven't uh, covered parameting. I haven't covered parameting because uh, it's identical to mid trend entry. So parameting is just the process of adding new positions to an existing open trade. Okay, so like, like in the example, this is what a, a parameter is about. It's like this one, you see, you could have multiple positions on this in your existing open trade. So you can add, if you see continuation patterns, for example, in an existing uptrend, and you see many, you can keep adding and adding new position on your existing open trade. Okay, let's assume that you have buy this uh, at the very beginning uh, for, I don't know, uh, for 30 bucks and then purchase an additional lot at 35 and then at 45, 45 and so on and so on as the market continues to rise. So this is what parameting is about. Both transactions, okay, uh, I mean, both um, uh, prior amiding or mid trend entry, etc., involve implementing a position. Let me just go back to my notes. Yeah, they both involve implementing a position after the market has really weakness a substantial move in a given direction. So the strategies that we have discussed today, all four of them, could also be applied to the timing of paramite positions, like I explained right now with the continuation patterns. Just, I have put on a few guidelines if you're thinking to add to paramite, so, so to add new position in an existing, uh, in an existing uh, open trade. Just few guidelines, three guidelines, and we are done for today. So first one, should you should not add to any existing position unless the last unit unit place shows a profit. So you will add an extra position only if you are already on profit. Second guideline, you should not add to an existing position if the intended stop point would imply a net loss for the entire position. Is that clear? You should not add extra position if your stop loss, if you are, if the intended stop loss would imply a net loss for your entire position. Third but not least, pyramide units should be no greater than the base, the initial position size. If you have open a position, uh, size 0.5, so half lot, your extra positions shouldn't be greater than 0.5, shouldn't be greater than the initial position size. So guys, that was it for today. If you have any qu questions, now is the time to tell me. Uh, if if you want to like uh, have a more, uh, more uh, like a, um, uh, um, you, if you want to just contact us directly, is the webinars at hfm.com. So feel free to contact us. Uh, otherwise, I will call it a date if there are any further questions. Uh, you know, uh, I'm here anytime, either via email or social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, uh, and etc. So feel free to contact us anytime. So I wait a bit more, no further questions. Eight, nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.
and see you again tomorrow as you are is having, if I'm not mistaken, a TPO's uh, webinar, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check. Oops. Uh, where was it? Uh, yep. TPO profiles, market profiles and TPO profiles. So join us here tomorrow, the same time for TPOs. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.